Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are continuing our watch series with the import inside of Cinema 4D. I initially wanted to do import and shading as one video, but I opted for a separate video yet again because the shading part will be rather long and the import part uh, is a little bit longer than expected. So without further ado, let's hit the coffee <laughs> and let's get going. The WhatsApp section where I usually tell you about what's going on in my life is rather short this week because stuff seems to be breaking on me lately and I spent most of the time fixing it. So it started on a particular shitty day where four of my things broke. It started when my router just went dead. After that I figured out one of my big storage drives also failed and later that day also my computer screen broke. As I wanted to cycle to some shop to get replacements, also my bicycle helmet broke down. Very frustrating, but that's not the end of it. One day later the operating system on my laptop died and my Xbox controller got stick drift. Today the fan on my 10 gigabit switch died and I had to opt for a replacement. So in between setting up routers, operating systems and also do all of the networking stuff, there wasn't a lot of time left. I really hope better times will come and this will not continue throughout the year. Fingers crossed. If you want to get access to the scene files I'm using here as well as all the other scene files that I ever used in my tutorials, I would be delighted to welcome you to my Patreon. Today we are only showing rather small scenes to depict the features but on Patreon there are rather large scenes as well as this magnifying scene or this circuit board. And the best thing is that those projects are free to use even in commercial environments. I'm also delighted to tell you that there are also some freebies in there as the material ball scene that you can use to test your own materials as well as use the materials that are provided with it or have a look inside of them to understand what I'm doing to my materials to make them look realistic. After this long, unfortunately sort of necessary shout out, as economy isn't looking too good, let's look at brighter things and jump into the Cinema 3D bit. And welcome to Cinema 3D land, let's start off where we left off in the last video, so we exported through Moi, so let's import into Cinema 4D. This generally is rather straightforward, but there are a couple of caveats I want to speak about. The first one is if you have a custom scene under files here with your own Cinema 4D presets. One of them for me is the frame rate. I changed that from 30 FPS to 25. If you just drag in your exported FPX and then hit OK, you can see it switches back to the original Cinema 4D defaults and does not adhere to your default scene. If you want your default scene settings respected, then the trick is to hold shift while dragging in your file. While we are at it, let's talk about the import settings, mainly the normals, as our mesh is already tessellated at export. This is the main quality setting here. So if we flap that open, we have three more settings. None means no rounding interpolation, so your mesh comes in edgy. Edge breaks will use the Cinema 4D font tag to do the calculations of what's round and what's not. And last but not least, what's already set, normal tags, will use the export data from our CAD program to define the normals. This is by far the best method as the mathematically defined CAD model knows exactly where the normals need to point at when exporting. To prove my point, I'll go with edge breaks first and then import. You can see our watch model appears rather small, though the size is correct. This is because we imported in a centimeter scale in Cinema 4D. We will fix that with our next import. If we hit H to zoom into our watch model, everything is looking fine until we look a little bit closer. So let's go to the crown here and you can see it's full of errors. And this is because the font tag right now is deciding what to round and how to round it. So let's go back to square one and try it one more time. As they say, third time's the charm, but before that I want to go to scale and set this from centimeters to millimeters since this is a rather small scene and this helps us with the precision. By shift clicking drag in our watch model again, then let's choose the normal tag and then go OK. Let's hit H and watch our crown and this indeed looks much better now. 
This is also a perfect opportunity to have a look on the mesh, so NB, and therefore decide whether the resolution is right or if we can spot any errors. Now the upper part and the ground looks fine and I spotted an error right here. This doesn't seem correct. You can see that if we go back to ground shading, then we have some slight artifacts here. Things like that are a reason to go back to CAD and fix those. Welcome to Plasticity Land one more time. So let's fix this error by going down here, select the part, then hit dot on the keyboard to solo it. The error came in with this edge here, so select it and hit Shift X to delete out the existing faces. What we can do is Alt click on the edge here to select the edge and make sure the whole edge is selected. Then hit Shift J for a patch. Go with G1 as we want to have a nice transition and click OK. Now we need to do that for the five remaining sides here. To see whether our fix has worked, let's pretend to export as topology. So Control Shift E to export and then Wavefront OBJ OK. Let's go with NGONs and raise the density. So one to see a little bit better what we are doing. And yes, our mesh is now moving with the topology. This is exactly what we want. Let's cancel the export and go for Control Shift E one more time. And instead of OBJ, we are going with a step file. Since we have selected the case back only, only this will be exported. So let's call it watch case back and then hit save and confirm here. Before we go over to Moi, I want to do one more thing. So let's hit the dot to enable everything again, then go to the ground selected and also export the ground as an extra. As I've seen before that the ground is a bit low res and could be higher res. So here we go. Let's export this step as well. And welcome to Moyland. Let's drag in our watch case back that we just saved and wait till it loads. Then go to File, Export or Save As. And this is the FPX. Name it accordingly and hit Save. Now, if you're not doing this in one go, this is the time where the screenshot of your export settings of the former object come into play. And this is what we used. So I can just hit OK and be done. Let's do the exact same thing with our crown. So let's drag it in. We don't want to merge it and we want to discard the old file. Wait till it loads. Then go to file, then save as and then name it and hit save. To make the mesh a little bit higher res, the only thing I'm going to change is the angle and set the angle from three down to two. This will make the subdivisions on the front face here slightly denser. This should now be high res enough to withstand high res close ups. So let's go with OK and then go to Cinema 3D again. Welcome back to Cinema 3D. The really cool part here is that as long as you haven't changed the position of any part, it's very easy to exchange those. For the case back, let's just delete that and then shift drag in our new part. Make sure the normals is set to normal tags and hit OK. And here we are, just like that. Let's do the same thing with the ground. So select and delete it and then bring in the new one by shift dragging that in. Here we go. OK. And it's as easy as that. If we go to grow shading, then we can see now the R is looking pretty decent. If you're still not satisfied, you can repeat the process and can have it even higher res for us. Now, I think this is good enough. If you want to opt for a higher res model, there's a couple of things worth considering. First of all, when texturing, you need to select a couple of those faces usually to restrict materials to them. And the more polygons there are, the more tedious this will become. The second thing is simply render time as a model with more polygons needs longer to render. For our small watch model, this doesn't affect the render time too much. But if you're into bigger models, then this definitely is worth considering. Now to another point, one really big topic here that you might not have even noticed is that all the axes of the objects are sitting in the world origin of Cinema 4D right now. And as of now, this is really a big caveat of this operation as plasticity doesn't know axes and therefore doesn't know how to place them. 
So once imported, we need to place them ourselves. What I always do and deem best is go through the objects one by one and then consider for every one of those where the axis needs to be placed to make it work best. Let's do just this. Fortunately, we don't have too many parts, so let's start with the case back, go into solo mode, then polygon mode, and then select both of those parts here. Go to tools and then axis center, and in the axis center, we want to select selected polygons and then execute. Here we go, let's leave this open. Go to the watchback inner, solo that, and then do the same here. And again, do the same for the watch face. Here we go, and then execute. For the rest of the objects, let's go to a view from below. Let's start with the bezel, and this time select those lower parts, two polygons here, execute. For the watch case, also let's select the lower polygons like this, execute. That leaves us with the glass and the crown. Let's go with the crown first, here we go. And what we can do is either those two or this one here. So it's centered and we can rotate it. Let's go with the back one, execute, here we go. For the class, I want to move a little bit closer so we can see what we have here. Then UL loop select the polygon strip here on the lower edge and then also execute. While we did that, I saw that we also have a problem with the glass here. It doesn't look nice. I don't know where this comes from. It seems like we also need to re-export this. And surprise visit back in plasticity. So you know where this is going. We just hit the glass, then control shift E to export the step file and then name it glass, then export. Yes. Then also go with OK. Back in Moi, let's bring in the glass here say OK, and it will load. And if we go to the other side, you can see the culprit of the disaster we had. So this is one of the cases where the CAD file doesn't import correctly. And actually, this is a very good thing that this happens right now, because it's always good to know what to do when something like this happens. And welcome back to Blasticity. Let's delete the cube and bring in our export that we just made from our glass. Now we can try to heal that here, but as I know Moi, this is not the cause. What is the cause is that this helper here is not spanning the whole face, but just half of it. In order to make it the whole face, we make use of our isoparam tool. A small tip I got on YouTube is to select the face first, then the isoparam sticks to the face. So let's invoke that by control R and we need to switch that to the other side. So hit tab and then go to this edge and click. Let's do this on the other side as well. So select the face, control R, tap, and then go to the rim here and click. Here we go. That should now be enough for Moi to not throw any errors. So let's go with control shift E, export, then go with the step file. And here with the glass, let's name it O2. Here we go. And welcome to Moi. Let's drag in our class O2 step and wait for it to load. Then have a look if that's loading correctly. Here we go. Let's have a look underneath. And yes, it seems to be fixed. So now let's export this real quick by going to File, Save As, again FBX, name it Watch Glass, and then save it. And this time we are going with a value of 3 here again, since the other value is a little bit too dense. Here we go. This seems to be looking good and without any errors. So let's hit OK. In Cinema 4D, let's delete our glass and then shift drag in our new one. Here we go. Let's hit enter and confirm that it's looking all right. Also in ground shading mode. Here we go. Seems to be fixed. So let's finally go where we wanted to go and go back into our polygon mode. UL for loop selection, select this edge here, then go back to tools and axis, axis center, and to selected polygons. Here we go. Let's go back to object mode and have a look whether the axis are where we set it to. So it seems like let's go out of solo mode. The ground is the one that is very prominent. So now if we can select the ground and turn it, 
yes, this seems all alright. As a last step in this video, I want to group everything in a logical manner. So let's go to the watch case as this is the main protagonist. Then go to create and alt click on a null so it becomes the child of the null, call the null watch. And then sort everything in a logical manner. For example, the case back inner should be lower than the case back here. Maybe we have the ground somewhere here. Then the watch face the bezel, and last but not least, the glass. Now, this might have been a very boring video as not a lot has been going on visually, but now we have imported our watch with pristine quality into Cinema 4D, and we can look and marvel at it right now. As a last step, what we can do is go to the watch null and create just another null by control clicking. This creates the null with the position, but not inside the hierarchy, so we know where to move our watch whenever new parts arrive. Let's call this original position or orange position. So we can take our watch now and zero it out. Here we go. And this is all there is to it for today. I hope you still learn something from it and at least find it somewhat entertaining. Now prepare for next week where we finally get into shading. And this is it for this week's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I think I will split up the videos now into smaller chunks as it's easier to watch than a long video with 40 minutes. So expect a couple of shading parts until we are done with the watch. By the way, I have heard you, a Vectron tutorial is coming. Let's as always thank the people who made this video possible. Of course, my Patreons. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, Doi Jim. For the Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Schietried, BVR, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Ness Graphics, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Ralf, Reiko, Reshock, Shamos Johnson, Shiro 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Welcome to the import section. Nice having you here. Now, if this video here doesn't seem as snappy and poppy, maybe I'm still a little bit frustrated from all the stuff that's breaking on me. So, in other words, I'm not quite up to the mark. Hopefully, you can still live with the quality I can put out. Help me by crossing your fingers on both hands. Is that a thing? I don't know. Next week is treating me better. Also, if you want to help me against the algorithm overlords, as always, post an emoticon. This time, what a nice occasion, let's go with crossed fingers. And as always, I wish you a fantastic start of the week. If you're watching this later, the best of times. And I say, happy importing. The really good thing is that this kind of import works without tariffs. Bye.